treat for you. We're here. We're here once again with Mr. Howard Stern. Right, right. I'm here again. I'm, um, here. I'm still here. I understand that Hillary Clinton was like your white whale. You tried to get her to come on in 2016. You were supporting her. You tried to get her to come on. What was that process like? Was it, was it her or was it her people keeping her from coming on? I had a feeling that, you know, in the same way I describe people like Lady Gaga or Sia or... I have some hardcore dudes in my audience, even in the case of Rosie O'Donnell. They're like, oh, I don't like her. Basically, because she's a woman or whatever it is, they don't like her. Never understood or, that. Right, but, but, but or, or Lady Gaga's a top 40 artist and I don't like her and I don't like her. And amazingly, with some of these interviews, and, and, I, and I have great pride in this, that after a person leaves, they go, oh, I get her now. I understand her. Because I think their humanity comes out, and they go, you know what, I have something in common with this person. Do you think it would have made a difference if she'd come on your show? Hillary? Yes. I do. And that's why how, I... How are your ratings in, 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 in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan? <laughs> okay, I'll give you my theory. One, but he won by less than 1%. Okay, I'll guess. give you my theory on this. I thought that if I did an interview with Hillary, that she would reach a new audience. Maybe a lot of people, and as we say, when we look at the Electoral College, what are we talking about, 70,000 votes or something like that? Mm -hmm. And so if it's 70,000 votes, and in those states I am popular, particularly Pennsylvania, uh, for example, so we have 33 million subscribers on Sirius. We, we anticipate at least two people in the, each household listening, 66 million people, maybe 60% of that audience is mine. What if Hillary had come on? And forget politics for a second, but what if we could have talked about her humanity, why she got into public service? Here's a woman who's dedicated her whole life to public service. What was her life like as a little girl growing up? What was her romance with Bill Clinton? What was she thinking when she was Secretary of State? What was she thinking when she was the First Lady? Was she saying to herself, I wish I could be President? Or was she satisfied with that? There's a million questions I would have had for her that I think would have humanized her. Mm -hmm. And I made, I, it's kind of a fascinating story. I went out on an all-out campaign to get Hillary to come on the show because I think it could have made a difference. And, and I want to say to anybody who now is running uh, as a Democrat, Donald Trump, I saw it on my show, he knows how to communicate with people. And, you know, you can mock him, you can say all the, the goofy stuff you want to say about the guy, but when he would come on my show, he knew how to connect. Not with the whole audience of the, of the country, but of some people. And I think... He used my show in a very effective way. And I think whoever is the Democratic nominee should consider going on Fox News for sure, as who, Mayor who Pete of the did. People, who of the 24, yeah. 24 Democrats who were nominated, <laughs> who, who would you be excited to have on? Oh, gee, I, I don't know. That, that, that's, Joe Biden. Uh, sure, why not? Because Joe Biden's had a fascinating life. Sure. And I think it would be interesting. Bernie. I mean, <clears throat> Bernie Sanders for sure. You know, Bernie Sanders is probably my biggest hero for one reason. And this is very self-serving. When the FCC was attacking me and they were attempting to take me off the air, and, and in a big way, it was almost like racketeering. They kept fining our stations. They kept mm -hmm. keeping us from buying other radio stations. Bernie Sanders got up in the Senate and said, I think what you're doing to Howard Stern is wrong. I believe in freedom of speech. And I want to go on record as saying you got to stop it. And it was pretty damn impressive. And I'll tell you. I was under siege at that point. I really was, and I thought it might be the end of my career. And what year are we talking about here? Oh, geez. I, I, I don't even remember when he did it. I, I would have 1963? <laughs> no, no, no. No, a little later than little, that. Little, little, Probably little, little, in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the 90s. King of all media, Howard Stern, king of all media, uh, all, you know, books, television, radio, films. Why do you need to be the king of all media? What is driving you? Because there's one thing about, like you say, like perhaps pleasing your mother. Right. But you don't have to be the king of all media to please your mother. You want a very, Why, serious, you I, want a very serious answer on that? I, I, you've been giving me a lot of serious answers. Right. I, I really want to know, who, it, what is the voice in your head that makes you want that? I think, and now, now I'm going to get heavy here for a minute, but I think as a kid growing up, I was very isolated and very lonely and very starved for attention. And I would do a lot of things to get attention. And, uh, you know, the world of adults and uh, getting them to be interested in me, particularly my mother and father, I think it was a very difficult thing for me. And so, you know, growing up and then finally getting on the radio, I think, and, and this, is, this is it, I, there was one point we had one out of every four cars on the Long Island Expressway in New York listening to me. 
And I would go home depressed thinking, why are the other three not listening to me? <laughs> and when I say depressed, I mean it. It wasn't enough for me. It's like I wanted to just have every listener and everybody's focus on me. And I will warn you, as I do in this book, that is a dangerous way to live. A, it can't be accomplished as much as I wanted to do that. But part of psychotherapy was growing up and saying, you know what, I've got to share the audience with you, Stephen Colbert. And, <laughs> and um, Thank you, Howard. Yeah. Thank you for sharing you bet. the audience. Howard Stern comes again. Is a